Hey everyone, I finally went out and bought a Focusrite Scarlet Solo. It's a Gen 3, it's the new one. This is the base model, and uh, we're gonna see if it knows how to Linux, but let's have a look at the front, because it's got phantom power, it's got an air button, no idea what it does, but it is there. Instrument pad, two preamps, you got quarter inch, XLR, you get this big chonky knob for your monitor, well, for your headphones. And check that out, direct monitoring, buttons right up there, right up front. Very glad to see that metal case. Well done, well done. It's got a decent weight to it on the back. Well, fingerprints, that's what you have on the back. That's the primary feature. But outside of that, Kensington lock, left and right out, quarter inch, balanced, unbalanced, that's good. And a USB 2 with a USB C shape. Yeah, check the manual before you leave the comments. That's what it is. Yeah. So what about connectivity? What can we plug into this? XLR, naturally, and a quarter inch. And you have one of each, and I prefer this over just a single XLR quarter inch combo jack since, hey, we got two preamps to play with. We can do vocals, we can do music, we can track two things, and uh, they plug in like you would expect, notch up, clicks right in, and the quarter inch, well, you can figure that out. When it comes to headphones, you might be wondering, can I power my RGB Blinkatron 9000s? It'll do it. I can tell you, I can guarantee you, it will easily do it since it will power my Sony MDR7506 studio monitors. Yeah, you're gonna be good. Just turn the knob where you need it and uh, yeah. Okay, if you've plugged the device into your computer, you have also installed the drivers. Welcome to Linux. We're taking a look at Pavu Control just to get an idea of what is available. Stereo input, stereo output, stereo duplex. And that's going to show up in input devices and output devices, respectively. There it is. It is ready to go right out of the box. But let's take a look under the hood. We're going to use also Mixer for that just to see if we have any low-level controls. Let me pop over to the Scarlet Solo USB Womp Womp. Not at all. That's okay. Since we're here to use Jack anyway, it's an audio interface, not a sound card. I use Cadence. Well, I don't use Cadence. I use command line, but for these videos, I use Cadence. It's about the easiest way to get Jack set up. And what I expect any interface to be able to do is 48K with a buffer size of 128. Since this is USB, stick with a multiple of two. We're going to go as low as you can go. We're going to stick it with two using the all set driver for this test. Let's tap the start button, see what happens. Ha! Receive bacon. We got it. Let's take a look with Katia, and we should have capture one, capture two, and on the output, we have playback one and playback two. Good to see. Moving on to my little torture test. This is a real live session that I used to record Linux Gamecast weekly. We have a full Vocal stack on track one and track two is completely unprocessed, but we're looking for X runs. Running it for about 15 minutes, didn't run across any. And again, this is at a 128 buffer at 48K. Good job here. Time for some quick and dirty round trip latency testing. This is very critical if you're gonna be doing live monitoring, be it for vocals or for instruments or anything of the like. The Focusrite Scarlet Solo Gen 3 does a good job. 48, 96, and 192. Didn't have any problems, and this is about what you would expect. It's typical for a USB 2 interface. Let's start this off with the Electro Voice RE27ND plugged directly into the Focusrite Solo Gen 3. No vocal processing. Here we are with the same mic, the RE27ND, currently running through my channel strip that I use for live streams. And uh, that's going to be not much, really. We have the same dehiss filter, but we also have a high pass, low pass, a DS or an EQ500, downward expansion, and a limiting amplifier. Up next, we have the Amazon Basics dynamic microphone. They're about 20 bucks, 30 bucks, something like that. I actually got this one used off eBay, but again, this is no processing whatsoever. Plugged directly into the Focusrite Gen 3, but we are using the dehiss filter, but that's the thing. Let's go ahead and check it out with a um, basic channel strip and see what it sounds like. Okay, we are back. This is the same Amazon Basics. And this is all, all of these mics are going to sound a little off because uh, this channel strip has been set up for a completely different um, microphone preamp and audio interface, but it gives you an idea of what it's going to sound like. 
And wrapping everything up, last but definitely not least, is the AT2020 condenser mic. It requires 48 volts of phantom power. It's a good way to test it on the Focusrite Solo Gen 3. I'll get that right eventually. But this is just plugged in directly, with the exception of the dehiss filter like everything else. And you know what? Let me just give you the difference there. I will disable the dehiss filter. You see, it's not doing a whole lot, but let's just go ahead and plug it into my channel strip and we'll see what it sounds like. Okay, we are back with the AT2020 using the miracles of very, very basic minimal processing because all of these microphones are extremely flat. And um, yeah, even this old AT2020 sounds the business. Once you get it dialed up a little bit, and again, this is not ideal. I'm listening to myself in the mix minus. I'm like, there's a couple of things I'd fix with all of these mics, but... It's not the fault of the focus right. It's just that every interface and preamps, they're all a little bit different. But I want to say good job all around. Okay, time for some final thoughts if we can shake off the atrocious guitar playing. But hey, man, it's always an excuse to break it out at least once a month or once every other month and go, ow, oh, my fingers hurt the next day. But we're here to talk about the Scarlet Solo doing everything it says on the tin. Perfectly serviceable budget USB interface. It's got clean preamps that get about 56 dB of gain. You got the XLR quarter inch line in, real time monitoring. Really, about the only thing that I have a problem with is it costs about 10, $15 more than the Behringer Euphoria UMC 204 HD. And that's arguably a better all around interface. But hey, at this price point, that's like arguing Xbox versus PlayStation. Just pick the favorite one, the one that you like, the one that has the color you want and buy it. At the end of the day, we have no drivers to install on Linux because we're awesome like that. It's gonna work with Pulse, it's gonna work with Pipewire. Most importantly, it works with Jack and the latency is absolutely low enough for real-time monitoring. That's a big plus. Now, if you're here for a little bit of that confirmation bias, you did all right. You made a good purchase. And uh, if you're in the market to pick something up like this, I'm going to say maybe look at the Behringer UMC 204 HD first, but also absolutely consider the Focusrite Scarlet Gen 3 because, hey, it's a solid piece of kit. And if you're in the market to buy one, check out the link in the description for our Amazon affiliate link. Ha, ah, marketing. Speaking of marketing, uh, I do want to thank all the lovely people. They make this show possible. Our patrons over at patreon.com forward slash Linux Game Guys. Thank you so much. We get to do little side projects like this outside of our main content for Linux Teamcast Weekly and Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays. Trying to get more people to do more stuff with Linux. And... Put a bow on it to finish my marketing spiel. Like and subscribe. That's how people find our content. And the algorithm is really, really big on smashing that like button, fam. So if you could do that, that'd be awesome. I'm not going to tell you which one up or down. Pick one. I don't care. Anyway, that's going to do it for me. Um, and I'll see you next time.